everyone, I'm Mick from Contour Education and today we're going to look at the issue of noise around our school. We're going to use geospatial technologies to collect data about noise and to represent that data on a map. Um, this is all part of an investigation, an inquiry uh, into noise levels and whether we meet the WHO guidelines. So our task is to, is to investigate the ambient noise levels. We're going to get our groups and start planning our investigation. So we'll look at the inquiry model, which is fairly consistent across uh, senior curriculum in Queensland, um, and we can develop some criteria there. Step two, we'll collect the data itself. So students will need to prepare to collect their data by downloading a couple of apps. One is a decibel counter. You can see a couple of free apps on screen. The other is a data collection app called EpiCollect 5 and we'll have a quick look at EpiCollect 5 in just a moment. The students will be split into groups and they'll have to collect data at each site. That data will include a location and uh, the actual an average um, sound level over a 30 second period. All of this data will be collected within EpiCollect and we'll be able to represent it on a map. So EpiCollect is a data collection tool and it has uh, an app interface for users to collect data and then a browser uh, interface for you uh, to manage the actual surveys and so manage the surveys and manage the data. Um, your projects, your surveys are your projects and you can go into your surveys and here's our sound monitoring survey and you can create the survey in here and look at the data itself. So this is the uh, creation tool and we have a form builder here where we actually develop our questions and you can see our questions listed in the middle and on uh, the left we have our bank of question types uh, and you can see checklists and photos and locations and so on and on the right we have our question detail where you actually enter the question and the parameters around uh, how the data will be input. So there's a multiple choice, uh, there's a text input, we have a location input uh, and we have an audio input as well. So now we can go and have a look at the data. So if the students have collected the data in the field, we can click on view data itself and that will bring us into the uh, data entries and you can see each one gets an ID, a generic ID, uh, it gets a date where it was completed gets a uh, name, name of each site. It gives us a latitude and longitude and you'll notice that's in decibel, de decimal degrees which is our uh, input and then the actual decibel level itself uh, and the audio if we had recorded that it would be placed in here. We can see that data on a map so we can see the locations, but nothing more. Uh, if we click on the site, we can see the detail for each uh, site, and we can actually go in and edit that entry here if we need to. So there's the decibel, there's the location, uh, and so on, and we can save, and away we go. We can also download our data here using the download option, uh, and you can give your project a name distinct name, your students can search for that name and find your project when they need to conduct the survey. So our next step is to actually map the data. And so if we download the data, we can save that file to our local machine. zip that. It is 
is best to convert to a spreadsheet. Then we can go into Google Maps and within Google Maps, once we're signed in, we can go down to this tool here called Your Places and across the top there to Maps and right down the bottom to Create Map. And this is a really neat tool. It's a distinct tool. It opens in a new browser called Google My Maps. And Google My Maps has a whole lot of features that you can use to represent data. Um, first we'll give our map a title and add a description. And that's updated. And we have a range of base maps that you can play with. And that will really depend on the data you have and uh, the message and the scale. And, uh, and there'll be a few ranges, be a range of options as to why you would choose different base maps. But they are there. And then we can import data on this data layer. And if we go and find our spreadsheet, we can import the spreadsheet here or bring it in from Google Drive. So location gets a few extras, but we have our questions one, two, three, and four. We have a range of locations. And you should be able to work out what you're looking at there. So first off, we want to choose a latitude and longitude to position our markers on the map. We tell the computer what is what. site name to actually title each marker. And Google now goes and places the data on the map. You can see it's placed in the right location, but it doesn't tell us anything more than that. If we update our style, little paintbrush icon there, and we're looking to style by column, want to choose our question three, the, uh, the audio, and then we'll flick from categories to ranges because we're dealing with a range, a continuous variable, and we can change the colors and the uh, number of groups, number of classes down to three. And what it's done, Google has automatically put a red mark, a red mark on a lower score green mark on a higher score and in most cases that would be fine but in the case of sound we we want to swap those around so we can do that here you can see we flick on the little paint can uncheck that box and then choose the color we want we can swap those colors and we have a much better map So now we cross-check uh, what is the WHO recommended level. It's about 85 decibels. Um, our highest value was 81, so that might warrant some further investigation. Uh, but three of the four sites scored pretty well, although again, our, our data collection isn't wide in scope. Um, reflecting on our work, well, the noise level is generally safe. Um, what strategies can we undertake to help mitigate? And what factors might have affected our data? What could we do better next time to get more value? So thanks for watching. Hopefully you've got some value out of today's session. Um, you'll see our contact details pop up on screen if you have any questions please get in touch. But um, yeah, hopefully you're able to now take some data you've collected and represent it using Google My Maps. Thanks.